I thought it might be interesting to take a look at Autodesk's Tinkercad. This is a web-based uh, modeling application and see what kind of things it opens up for people in terms of possibilities. Uh, what I, what I, I'll take you through a quick overview of, of how the tool works and what I think is really interesting about it is the way you can uh, code up uh, your own custom primitives or use things that the community has created as uh, alternate ways to um, build things. It's a really nice, uh, simple, straightforward way to uh, script. It's using JavaScript, and uh, we'll just jump right in and see, let you guys see what you think. So, the website is tinkercad.com, works in any HTML5 browser. When you log in, you'll see your home page here. You can spin through the gallery and take a look at some of the things other people have done. Uh, you've got a little bit of control here to look at it from different angles. You can like it, make comments on it. And uh, of course there's a bunch of learning tools here for things that you might like to create. So on your dashboard, if you're ready to create something, you can say create new design. I have one here already that is blank in this tab. So it uh, should be a very simple, uh, familiar kind of interface for most people. You can basically drag and drop things into the UI. And then uh, middle mouse button lets you pan and zoom with the wheel, and then the right mouse button will do your tumbling. So you've got basic manipulators for moving things around in the scene. Now, when we look at this uh, cylinder, what we don't have are the parameters that uh, you may be used to from other uh, 3D modeling programs, and we can we can uh, access those. So let's go to community, and we've got things like um, the, we've got these shape generators, and we're going to look at uh, some of these to start with. So this is these are a couple that I, I've done before. What I'll do is just let's create a new shape generator. We'll make it based on a cylinder again, and what happens? When you do this, is you automatically get the editor here for the the code to create that cylinder. Uh, again, JavaScript, so very simple, uh, not much code at all to to create a cylinder. And right away, I can take that into the scene and start doing things with it. So what you'll see when we look at this shape generator compared to the standard primitive, standard primitive doesn't give me any controls. The shape generator does. So I can control things like the bottom radius, for example, or the top radius and the height. And uh, then I can actually go in here and tweak this script to make something uh, new and interesting out of that. So using, using this as a default, for example. You can also start with a blank slate, but I often find it's easier to start with something existing. So to start with, I'm just going to uh, format this a little bit just so we can see all this on one screen without having to scroll. So the first thing I'd like to do is add another uh, parameter to this. What, what I'm thinking about is when we look at this cylinder shape generator, it's got a, a pretty consistent amount of uh, faces around it, so trying to keep it nice and smooth. And what I'd like to do is have that uh, arbitrary control over how many faces are around the, the circumference there. So let's copy this. The params section is uh, what defines the UI. Oops. Just fix the formatting there. And you can see right away as I put that in, I've got an error and it gives me the details. What's happening in this case is that I don't have a comma after the previous parameter. So now that that's there, we can actually uh, see that the, the error goes away and we can start uh, cleaning things up. If I click save right away, you, you see that it, that new bit of UI shows up. So it's a very fast and uh, immediate sort of feedback in terms of developing things. So let's make a, a new control here called divisions. Display name, let's make that divisions with a capital D and save that. So as you can see that uh, updates the UI right away for me. Now in this case divisions is not a length or a distance, it's a 
it's an integer. So let's just change that to int. And we may as well look at our range, min, max, and the default value. So if we're talking about number of faces around, we wouldn't want less than three in terms of keeping this uh, nice and simple. Maybe we'll, we'll cap it at a maximum of 24. And let's set our default value to be, say, five. So again, save that, and the UI updates to reflect that. It's also updating uh, the thumbnail here where it can. At uh, this point, it's, it's not quite ready because I've got a little bit more uh, to do with it. So the first thing that we're going to do is comment out the old uh, way that the divisions were calculated, and let's create a new one. So in this case, we're going to call the uh, into the into the UI. So for simplicity, I'm going to call my variable divs. We call to the params to get the divisions value, and finish that off with a semicolon. And then down here, what we can do, let's just take out the old end divs that we commented out and call it divs. So if we save that, uh, we get some updates here right away, and we've got that new control over our system. This, this usually takes a little bit to update, so you see here where we're waiting for that to uh, come through. But if I take a previous version, which is the exact same thing, I can control those as you see, and again control my various radius settings. So that's, that's pretty cool in terms of being able to build stuff yourself. You've also got control over uh, other shapes that people in the community have driven or created. So let's look at this Pro Gear, for example, by uh, Mr. John Carter, who's not from Mars. So again, you've got control, you can give feedback and review things, and then you've got whatever UI they've set up. So in this case, it's a gear. Uh, makes sense. Let's change the number of teeth on there. Um, maybe, maybe it's we want a little bit of twist on there. Maybe there's a bevel on it. So you can see John has given us some interesting controls over that shape. Now, of course, uh, a lot of people would probably like to take this data somewhere else to work with it, and you can go to Design, Download for 3D Printing, and there we go. So you can export to an OBJ, probably your first choice, maybe you might go STL or Vermal, but uh, OBJ works nicely, and then you can import that into uh, your other modeling apps and continue to work away with it. Uh, a couple other quick notes here. You can go through the details in terms of what the what's happening with the platform and the API. Uh, there's a bunch of details in terms of how all this works, so you can jump into uh, any of the classes and, and see exactly what's happening and how they work, so pretty nice documentation. And uh, nice, simple system again. So if you're interested, give that a shot and have fun with it.